Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 10 of the simple series of my Z80 programming tutorials. In this series, we create a single assembly file to do a task each week. This time, we're going to be looking at creating simple images on the screen of the Sega Master System and the Game Gear. Now, we're going to be sometimes referring to them as maybe sprites, but actually we're going to use the tile map. Now, the reason for this is I think as a beginner, you're going to be better off just working with the tile map, which has a limit of 8x8 eight eight coordinates, so each block is 8 pixels wide and tall, but and you can't have one halfway across a tile. But I think that's going to be easier for you because the sprites come with other limitations about the number of sprites on a line, and you have to deal with the hardware sprites and things. So I think as if you're just starting out getting things on the screen, the tile map is going to be simpler for you to work with. And if you decide to move to proper sprites, harder sprites later on, then that's not going to be too difficult for you because the format is basically the same. OK, so let's have a look at the example we're going to be using today. So here's the code. Now, if you've seen these tutorials before, there's two versions for each episode. The first one will produce a small smiley face, and that's a single 8x8 tile. And the second one will produce the larger Chibiko character. Now, in this case, the example will work on the Master System or the Game Bear now. Now, the Game Gear Master System are virtually the same hardware, so we're just defining a symbol called buildSGG, and that will change the code according to the system that we're working on. OK, so here is the file we're assembling today, and this is what's going to be doing our work for us. Let's go through the code and see what everything does and how it works. So at the start here, we're defining two symbols, one for the control port of the VDP at BF, and one for the data port at BE, and it's these we'll need to use for writing data to the graphics hardware. First thing we're doing is we're starting our cartridge here. We've got an origin at zero in memory and a jump to our main code over here. We've then got some return statements for the RSTs and the NMI, the non-maskable interrupt. Those are just in case an interrupt fires or anything, then we'll return. Now, on the other side of the cartridge at 7, double F zero, and it's always at this address, even if the cartridge is bigger, there is the so-called header. And this is a, a valid header for most cases. Now, if you're working on some systems, the export bias of the Sega Master System, you would need to write a valid checksum, and that would need to go here. But if you're using an emulator or a Game Gear, then you're not going to need that. But this header should be enough for most cases. So for our testing today, this is all we're going to need to get our emulator to run our cartridge OK. Now, when a Sega Master System or Game Gear start up, the system doesn't have any kind of firmware like a computer would do, so we have to set everything up ourselves. The first thing we're doing is we're checking the intimate mode is what we expect, and we're setting a valid stack point within memory here at DFF0. Next, we're going to initialize the screen. So we're using this out increment repeat command here, and we've got an array called VDP init data. And these are the initialization commands we're sending to the graphics hardware to turn the screen on. So we've got register numbers here and values here. So they sent in pairs, and the hardware knows how to process these and will set the screen up. So we're not going to go into those. They're what we need for today's simple example. I've done a bitmap example and a sprite example on this system before. So if you need to know more detail, please take a look at those. So at this point, we've set our screen up, but we need to set up our palette. The palette write address is in VRAM at C000. We use a command called prepare VRAM, and that will select the memory address for us automatically. And you can see it's just here. So all we need to do is we note load the low byte and send it to the VDP control. Uh, we defined that at the very top, if you remember. And then we take the high byte. I've lost my place there. And then we take the high byte. We all in hexadecimal 40. We need to set bit 6 to 1 to tell the system that we're writing to VRAM, not reading. So, And then we just add that to the VDP control as well. So we're going to use this prepare VRAM function quite a bit. So first of all, we're just selecting the palette address. And then we are selecting our palette data, which is labeled here. And on the master system, we're sending 16 bytes. Strangely enough, the Game Gear has a better palette. It has 32 bytes. So we're going to have a different palette on each system. But either way, we just send our data to the VDP data port and do an out increment repeat again. Let's have a look at that palette. So here it is. So on the master system, we use two bits per channel, red, green, blue. But on the Sega Game Gear, we use four bits. So a much better palette on the Game Gear, although it doesn't make too much difference on these 8-bit systems. Either one is pretty much OK. So there we go. That's one of the few differences of the Game Gear. So at this point, we've got our screen turned on, and we've now got our colors defined. So if you were wanting to strip out my code and start with your own, this would probably be about the right point you would want to do it. 
we're going to now define our bitmap data and we are going to define a function called define tiles which is going to do the work for us we specify a vram destination now i am specifying tile number 128 each tile is eight lines each line is four bytes so eight times four times our tile number is the memory address of the tile data i'm using tile 128 on the assumption we may have a font from 0 to 96 or 0 to 127. So then we're specifying our bitmap data here. If we go down the bottom here, this is our smiley face here. Now, bitmap data on the Master System and Game Gear is in what's known as bit planes. A bit plane is where we have the, the same bit of all eight pixels combined together in a byte. So all of the bit zeros of the eight pixels are in here, in this bit plane zero. All the bit ones are here, all the bit twos here, all the bit threes here. And so that's a total of four bits, which gives us 16 colors. So our smiley face is mostly in the color one. Parts of it are in color two, though, and some bits are in color three. And you would see that if you combine these together. It doesn't use 16 colors because this example has been used on the Amstrad CPC and other four color systems. And our sprite, or our tile rather, is eight lines tall. So that's our bitmap data there. We've just defined the memory length in BC here, and we use this define tiles function just here. So we're using that prepare VRAM function, which will select the DE address as the VRAM address we're going to write our data to. And then all we're doing is we're loading in a byte from HL, outing it to DE, and then we're using BC as a counter. We're using this way instead of the OTIR command, because the OTIR command only uses B as a counter, so it's limited to 255 bytes. So in this case, I thought not having that limitation would be better because sometimes like with our font we might need a lot more data than that so we're just streaming all of the data straight to the vdp port it's the vdp data port after selecting that vram address it's, this is doing most of the work there so that's not too difficult now so at this point we've now got our bitmap in memory and we can show it to the screen we've got another function here get vdp screen pos what this does is it calculates a tile number and works out the memory address of the tile that we want to change. Now in the Master System and Game Gear, each tile is defined by a pair of bytes and the tile map starts at hexadecimal 3800. Now, if you think about it, the tile map is 32 tiles wide and each tile takes up two bytes. So if we have a Y position and an X position, to calculate our memory address, we need to have the base of the tile map, 38,000 in hex, the Y position multiplied by 64, that's 32 tiles times 2 bytes per tile, and we need to multiply the X by 2, 2 bytes per tile. So we just do all of this, add these together, and that will be our destination memory address, and we use prepare VRAM to select that destination memory address. So we need to do a bit of multiplication, but the Z80 doesn't have multiply commands. But if we're doing multiplication that's multiples of 2, so 64 or 2 for example, we can do this by bit shifting. So what we're doing here is we're loading in our Y position, we're loading it into a top byte and then shifting it to the right until the lowest bit of that byte becomes in the 32 valued column. So we're shifting it to, to the right twice here, moving any bits from H into A that go through the carry. And then finally, we're moving A into the low byte here. And that's the quickest way of getting it into that 32 bit value position. On the game gear, you'll notice there's a few slight tweaks. Now you see the game gear screen is quite a bit smaller but it doesn't start at the top left, it actually takes the center of the screen. So the top left of the tile map is actually invisible. So we're adding three to the vertical position and we're adding six to the horizontal position multiplied by two because of the bit shifting again. So this will select the correct position on the game gear for the equivalent position on the master system. So we're, we're keeping the top left corner constant, but of course the bottom right corner on the visible screen of the master system would be invisible on our game gear code but i thought that was the best way for you to get started and for things to work as easily as possible so we are adding our base here 38000 but of course we only need to add the top byte here we add it to h and we select our prepare vram which will set our memory address at this point we're ready to write that tile so we just write 128 for tile number 128 because if you remember that's what we defined here the second byte will have the remaining bit of the tile number and flipping options. We just set that to zero and write that as well, both to VDP data. And that's all it takes to get our little smiley face onto the screen. So that's that one. OK, so that's the concept of getting a single sprite to the screen as a, a tile. Sorry, I keep calling it a sprite. I mean that in a sort of graphical term, not in a hardware term. 
So let's see our more advanced example here. So we've got this Chibiko character this time. This is my sort of mascot for the um, channel. And here it is again. So we're going to get this to the screen here. Now you can see I'm using a different palette here, but we're not going to go into that. Now this tile design is 48 by 48. And if you want to know how you can create your own sprites in the correct format for today's example, I'd suggest you take a look at my free open source Acura Sprite Editor. It's, um, it will convert all of the graphics for these tutorials. This is what I use to create them. If you go to Z80 here, you'll see there is an option for Master System Game Gear and Save Raw Bitmap. And that will save this broken down into 8x8 chunks in the correct format, either for a tile map or a sprite, because it's the same format on the Master System and Game Gear. So that's what we used to get today's data. And you can see we're actually just importing it here as a binary file. OK, so the first part is basically the same. Loading in our palette. Our palette's slightly different, but same code. Defining our tiles, again, same position. But of course, there will be far more tiles this time. Now, this is the bit that's had to change. The fill area with tiles command is new. You see, our Chibiko character, the 48 by 48 pixel, image has been split up into 6x6 six six tiles, 36 tiles. And what we want to do is we want to show those tiles to consecutive positions within the tile map to rebuild our character. And that's what this code does. So we position the XY using BC, the width and the height in HL, and the starting tile number in DE here. And if we go down to fill area with tiles, here it is. This will actually show our Chibiko character onto the screen. And it's kind of important to understand here that the fill area with tiles command we're looking at here is designed to work in the same format as the Acura Sprite Editor. If you were using an alternate Sprite Editor and you were exporting the tiles in vertical order, going down and then across, then your image would come out backwards and you'd need to change it. It wouldn't be too hard, but you would need to change it. So this is going across and then down, which is the way Acura Sprite Editor is exporting. So the first thing we're doing is we're setting our H and L to the ending position of the tiles that we're going to show. So for example, BC is the start and HL is the width because that's the easiest way to think of. But for the code, we want H and L to be the last value that BC are going to contain when we want to finish our loops. So we're just adding B to H and C to L here to do that. At the start of each line, we use get BDP screen pause, which is just going to convert our BC value into a memory address. And then we're ready to do the line because every time we write to the VDP data port, it automatically increments. So we can do a whole line, and then we just need to move down to the next line and recalculate that position for the line. And that's what we're going to do. So we're just using D and E here. We're writing to the VDP data port here and incrementing D each time, moving to the next tile, because they're going to be consecutive in memory. That's what this relies on. We increment B, check it against H. If we're not at the end of the line, we just repeat. When we are at the end of the line, we restore BC, so we get the left-hand side position of the start of our tile picture again. We increment the Y position, we check if we're not done, if we're not we jump back up here and we recalculate again. And that's all there is to it, that's all it takes to get our Chibiko character to the screen within the limitations of the tile map. So we're effectively drawing in this kind of zigzag format here. That's it. Now, if you were going to do this with sprites, of course, you'd have you could do it. You'd just have to use lots of sprites to build up the character. But as I've said before, if you were starting to work with you know, many, many images on the screen, you know, maybe you were drawing a race course or something vertically down the screen and you had cars and things, well, you'd have to start thinking, well, am I going to exceed the limits of the actual sprite hardware? You know, how, how many things am I showing on each line and so on and so forth? Whereas using the time up here, yeah, OK, it's quite crude, but it's a great starting point for just getting graphics to the screen and worrying about your input routines and not having to worry about limitations of sprites or things like that. So there we go. That's what we're going to be looking at today. That's the end of the, today's episode and the example. We're going to come back to the Master System and Game Gear. We're going to be adding joystick control and we're going to move in a smiley face around the screen in a later episode. So if you like this, please like and subscribe and all that stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this and it was some interest to you. Thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out my new YouTube channel known as TB Ackerman's Live. This is going to be a live streaming channel and it's going to be um, some more casual content. It will be me streaming some of my programming sessions, me playing games and chatting along. Um, I'm going to try and really do a lot of technical content in there, try and explain things as I'm playing games, you know, talking about the hardware or while I'm programming. And also I'm going to try and interact with the chat a lot. So if you really enjoyed today's lesson, then maybe you want more content and that will give it you. Equally, if you didn't enjoy today's lesson, if it was too hard for you, if you found it confusing and you want something a bit lighter hearted, then it might be interesting to you as well. 
Though I guess you've probably already clicked off if you didn't enjoy it because 95% of my viewers give up after about two minutes. But either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.